Sorry, Jack. Chucky's back. Today on Outside the Box Reviews, one of the rare cases where I'll start a review off with a figure in a box. We are looking at the NECA Cult Classics Wave 4 Chucky figure from Child's Play 3? I really highly doubt this figure is based any off of Child's Play 3, and I'll get into my reasons why in a minute here, but I am super excited to get my hands on this figure. Chucky is of course an icon of horror, character that I feel is necessary to have in any horror fanatics collection, but his figure releases came pretty early on in both NECA and McFarlane's movie Monsters lines, and I've had a harder time tracking down versions of them to pick up. I am still looking for a McFarlane one, hope to do a figure wars someday, but I found this guy hanging from the shelf at a flea market of all things for a pretty reasonable price, new in package, and I knew I had to have him. So let's not waste any more time, let's get this guy outside the box. See what it did there? And because Chucky is from what I consider the golden age of slash horror movie figures coming from the early 2000s, Chucky has a ton of accessories with him. This was back when plastic was quite a bit cheaper than it is these days and we could get more out of a single release. So here we have his good guy doll box, which is a fantastic accessory. This is actually the reason why I wanted this Chucky above McFarlane's or anybody else's, because this is just freaking amazing. A beautiful rendition of the Good Guys Doll box. It comes flat in the package. You do have to assemble it. It's both an outer shell, and if you take a look inside, you can kind of see there's an inner shell piece that gives you that yellow interior, and that way you're not just having the plain cardboard exposed. Mine doesn't seem to really sit quite right. I am having some issues with the bend up here. It doesn't really want to lay the lid flat but not a huge deal. I'm sure I could apply a little tape to it or something if I wanted to, but I'm probably not going to bother because I don't want to risk hurting this box. But ugh, it feels weird to review a box, but here we go at the top. We got the Good Guys logo, the slogan, even a little UPC on it. The side, we got all the photos, very reminiscent of the movie, batteries included. Back there, some different photos here on the side, a little Good Guy footprints on the bottom, all the right details on the front. Now, the one thing it is missing is I really wish it would have had a clear plastic piece right here in the window to make it look more like an actual toy box where this would have been a window box. It's empty which isn't the worst thing because I kind of like having Chucky bursting out of it because his facial expression is frozen in pissed off mode so it's not like you can really make him look like he's a normal good guy doll in this box. But the fun doesn't stop there. We get some cool killing accessories for Chucky. We get his voodoo knife. Very nicely done. Nice silver blade there with the red paint accent. Got a skull, crossbones, and is it supposed to be a little flame or something down there at the bottom? Very, very nicely detailed. Chucky can hold it decently in his hand. Or even if you prefer the stabbing motion, we could do that too. Next up, we have a baseball bat. Very nicely detailed. Great wood grain and paint shading going on with this. Very simple weapon, but very effective in execution here, no pun intended. This fits well in Chucky's hand too. And last but not least, we have his hammer. A very nice claw hammer. Once again, a very nice wood handle on it. And the black head. You even see the wood through the top of the hammer there. Very nicely detailed. Once again, simple accessory, but very well done. But what do these three accessories have in common? If you guessed that they're not in Child's Play 3, you're right. If you guess they're in the original Child's Play, you're also right. These are all weapons used by Chucky in the original film. Not Child's Play 3 like NECA claims on the box. I'm assuming it was cheaper to get the rights for the sequels. I believe MGM bought the Child's Play series after the first installment, so maybe the rights for the first movie are a little harder to get. I'm not complaining. I'd rather have stuff from the original movie, but I feel like it should be out there. These are all from movie one. Voodoo Knife is what he uses to take out Dr. Death. Hammer takes out the baby babysitter and then he knocks Andy around with his baseball bat. As for Chucky himself, one of the first things you'll notice on the figure is that he actually has rooted hair, which is pretty rare for a figure in this size, though both McFarlane and NECA both did this with their figures. It's a nice shade of red, maybe a little too glossy, but it's not supposed to look realistic because he is a doll. Mine is pretty messy, which isn't really a problem. Chucky's hair was pretty messy too, so either if you want to smooth it down, make it look more normal, or if you want to mess it all up, and make him look like a messed up toy, you can kind of go either way with it. The facial expression is something I'm not a big fan of on this figure. I don't like the expression overall. I would have been okay with an angry face, but just that open mouth and just the 
way he looks is just odd. You can get him at certain angles or poses where it looks appropriate, like he's attacking somebody, of course, but overall, it's just not my favorite skull book. But the detail there is done well. He's got a nice flesh tone, the freckles are on there, his blue eyes, even detail inside the mouth, and his little cleft in his chin. So, not badly done, but just kind of ugly. Coming down here to his costume, all the right details. We got his blue overalls with the red buttons at the top. The overalls are kind of a rubberized piece, but they're not really movable in any way, shape, or form. Of course, all the stitching painted on here, all the little good guy logos and things going on in his clothing. The striped undershirt, long sleeve shirt, cuffs around his wrists, the one hand to hold all of his accessories, and this other hand, which is kind of flat, and I don't really know what to do with in posing, and I really don't care for it as much. It does have some nicely detailed fingernails as well, next to my messed up ones. But the straps here on the back for his overalls. One other detail I just noticed here, which I think is really cool, is there's a seam going down the back of him, down the back of his shirt, which would almost be the Velcro where you'd open him up and see where his batteries were, or weren't in Chucky's case. But really nice attention to detail there in the sculpt. I do feel like the proportions on this figure are a little off. The arms seem a little overly long to me. This guy isn't in scale with any other figures in the cult classics line any of those seven inch figures he's a little too big for what he's supposed to be and coming down here we have his shoes red and white and then my favorite part here on the bottom we have the treads with actually all the details sculpted in really really nicely done now you can kind of see there's some gunk in there that's my bad. I was actually trying to make a casting of it to make some Chucky footprints for a picture I was taking, and the wax is just proving a little harder to get out than I intended, but I'm sure it'll clean up with a little work. For articulation, Chucky has a ball-jointed head. Go forward and back, side to side. Really good range of motion here, not hindered by anything. Pin and socket shoulders, but they're very, very scary to move. Scarier than anything in the Child's Play movies, these shoulders just feel very stiff and very breakable, and these early shoulders on NECA figures were known to have issues. I direct you to my Michael Myers Evolution of Evil 2-pack review if you want to see some horror stories with that. But it does go out a decent amount. You could also go forward and back with it. Once again, very, very stiff. You want to be very careful with this. If a hinge at his elbow, it goes about 45 degrees. Got a ball joint, I believe, at the wrist. Not really much in and out motion, really just rotating. And that's it. No more articulation through the rest of Chucky's body. Kind of weirds me out because, as I mentioned before, the overalls are rubberized, but they don't seem to really allow you to do anything with the rubberized plastic. It's just rubberized for the sake of being that way. Unless I'm wrong and I'm just too terrified to actually move this figure. For a size comparison, here he is next to two of his contemporaries. On the left, we have the Evolution of Evil Michael Myers figure from NECA. On the right, we have Jason Voorhees from the Mezco Cinema Fear line. And you can see Jason and Michael are probably pretty well in scale with each other. And Chucky stands higher than their waist. So it seems a little out of scale to me. Actually, you know what? This doesn't seem like a completely fair comparison. I should probably bring a McFarlane figure in here. Um, hold on one second. Uh, who should I get? Um... Oh, I know. Candyman, 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 Candyman. All right, there we go. And you can see Candyman actually stands a bit shorter than both Jason and Michael, making Chucky almost up to his chest, which he's going to get some bees in his face in a minute here, but definitely not the best scale for him. And to compare him to some other pint-sized NECA figures, here we have him next to young Michael Myers from the Evolution of Evil 2-pack complete with shoulder issues, and Sam from Trick or Treat. And these guys feel more in scale with each other, but I think all these guys are a little on the large side. But Chucky stands about the right height to young Mikey, but is definitely much larger, much wider of a character. And last but not least, here he is next to a Marvel Universe Wolverine figure. Why Marvel Universe Wolverine? Well, when I made a custom Chucky, this is actually the figure I use as a base. I did replace the hands with hands off of a larger figure, feeling that Chucky as a doll probably would have had kind of larger hands. And I re-sculpted the head, re-sculpted onto this body, bulked him up a little bit. But overall, I feel like this is probably closer to what I would want Chucky to stand at than where NECA's figures stand. So overall, this figure is undeniably flawed but I'm still gonna recommend it. I think the accessory of the box alone makes this figure freaking fantastic, and the amount of sculpted and painted detail onto him is wonderful. I usually think of NECA as having stepped up their game in recent years to bring us 
truly, truly great figures. But the truth is, the sculpting and painting has always been on point. It just bring that articulation in in recent years that has really set it over the edge. But this figure is very, very cool. Very well done. He comes with some great accessories. And my flaws and nitpicks with him aren't the worst things in the world, to be quite honest. So, solid recommend for Chucky. Having said that, though, I am really hoping NECA will pursue this figure again. We'll do more Child's Play figures. I would love to see Chucky get the treatment that Freddy and Jason have got. And a new original Chucky. Maybe Child's Play 2 where his hands were moved and he has the knives shoved in the stump. Uh, maybe we could skip Child's Play 3. Bride of Chucky. Love Chucky's look in that movie. Definitely would need a Tiffany as well to go with him. Seed of Chucky, probably skip that too. Curse of Chucky, I'm torn on. Movie was decent, just wasn't a huge fan of Chucky's look in that one, to be quite honest. But let me know in the comments below, if you could pick one Child's Play movie for NECA to make a figure from, which one would it be? Also, make sure you check me out on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews, dig back through my feed a little bit. I took some cool pictures with this guy. Also, check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, it's been another Outside the Box Reviews, and I'm your reviewer to the end. Heidi ho!